Hello, this is Michael with Field Tech Academy. This is video four in my Field Nation series. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about your profile. Your profile is probably the most important element of the things we've talked about so far. I'm gonna show you how my profile is set up so you can get some ideas of how you would like to set your profile up. I've been on Field Nation since 2010. I've made a few hundred thousand dollars on this platform. So I can give you some tips so that you can make your profile work for you. Once you're logged into Field Nation, you're gonna go up to your icon. You're gonna select my profile. One of the first things you wanna do is to make sure that you have an actual profile picture and not the default picture that is with Field Nation. You wanna make sure that your picture looks professional. I wouldn't wear just a basic t-shirt. I'd put on a polo or some type of business shirt. You wanna smile in the picture. You wanna make sure that your hair is combed. And this is your image that you're portraying, so make sure that it is a good picture, that it is clear. Your about section is where you get to just free write about yourself. Treat it like the summary of a resume. I wouldn't go crazy deep and do paragraph after paragraph. Make this short, sweet, and concise. On the reliability side over here on the right, they look at the completion percentage. They look at your timeliness. Since they measure these things, you need to focus on these things when you are completing calls. As you can see, I have personally completed well over a thousand jobs. You can see that I have a five-star rating over my lifetime of my profile. As we scroll down, you're going to see skill sets and equipment and your screenings. Field Nation does not require a drug screening or a background screening. If you want to be in the top tier, you need to get one. There are certain buyers that will not offer you tickets if you do not have a current drug screening or background screening, and they have to be within the last year. You're gonna to have to pay for it. You're investing into yourself and it will pay dividends. I noticed that my background screening was more than a year old, so I redid it. I also noticed that my drug screening was out of date, and so I went and peed in a cup today. In the skill set section, you're indicating what your skill sets are. You'll notice in my skill set section, there are things like 10 foot ladder and 66 block. Those aren't skill sets. Why do I have those there? When you're requesting jobs, the buyers that create the tickets may have set certain parameters and they're gonna say that people have to meet these certain requirements to request this job. They can put in something that isn't a skill set. It doesn't matter. If they require it, then you need to fulfill that. Field Nation gives you the option when you're requesting the ticket to add something to your profile in that moment. A lot of these things have been added because the buyer was offering a ticket and listed something as a requirement. You would have never added a 10 foot ladder into your skill set section. That's a piece of equipment. Doesn't make logical sense. Certain buyer wanted it, so I added it. You'll also notice that I have 291 skill sets. Can you even think of 291 skill sets? This has developed over over the last 13 years. When I first started, I obviously added all the skill sets that I could think of, and then over the years, as buyers have listed different things that they want, then I've just added them, and it has built into a huge list. The equipment section is for pieces of equipment that you own and carry on your van. As you can see, I have 81 items listed. A lot of these are things that buyers requested on a particular ticket, and I've added them. There's gonna be a lot of duplicates. You'll notice here, where 66 punch down tool and then 66 punch down tool cable tester butt set. Well, I have a butt set listed. I have a cable tester listed, but apparently one time or more than one time, this particular buyer set this as a requirement. So I added it to my profile. All of these lists I'm gonna make available on my website at fieldtechacademy.com. It'll be a downloadable item in our shop. If you had done a vaccination for that particular virus that was going around, you could list it here in the top right. You can also list other languages. You want to list all the languages that you can speak. That can open up certain doors for you. Below that section, you've got your licenses and certifications. This is a great place to put in your A+, plus, or your Network+, plus, or if you've got a scissor lift certification, things like that. A lot of my certifications I got so long ago when I put them in that somehow Field Nation hasn't interpreted the date right, because I can guarantee you I did not do this in 1969. And what's funny is, my A plus I took in 1999 before they had expiration dates. So even though it was in 1999, they show that it expired 53 years ago. So who knows what the heck. Now further down, you can list employment. You could put things in here that may reinforce your technical abilities. These things are gonna be much more important when you're a new tech or a tech that hasn't done a lot of jobs. You're gonna get a lot more scrutiny than a tech that has done a lot of service calls. This is something I would go ahead and put in any relevant experience that would relate to tech. 
Your education section is kind of the same way. You can notate your high school diploma, any associate's degrees, bachelor's degrees, or any kind of courses that you've taken. We have an availability section. I have never used this, not even once. If one of you guys out there has found that this is useful, then please leave a comment. I would love to know, but it, to me, it seems kind of irrelevant. To the right, we have the recommendations section. And of course, people can leave you reviews and star ratings, but there's also an ability for people to make recommendations about your skill sets. When somebody leaves a recommendation for you, you have the option to accept or delete it or to hide it. Ironically, I had one sitting here that I didn't even know was here, so I'm going to accept it. Any of the recommendations that you accept are gonna be publicly visible to buyers when they're looking at your profile. That will help to bolster the strength of your overall profile. The top section is, of course, gonna have your name, your field nation ID number, your city, state, and your phone numbers. You wanna make sure that you're listing phone numbers that you will answer. Field Nation has buyers from all across the United States. You need to answer phone calls that are from out of state area codes. If some buyers will call you even if you haven't requested a ticket, if they need it covered, they're gonna call you and say, hey, we've got this ticket available, can you do it? Some buyers will call you after you've requested it to validate whether you have certain skill sets or whether you have a brain. They're gonna ask you idiot test questions. Do you have common sense? Have you done this before? They just need reassurance that you're gonna take care of them and get it done. One thing to observe here is that I've done over 1300 jobs but I've only had 189 clients that tells you there's a lot of repeat business on Field Nation so taking care of one buyer can be a difference maker you make one buyer happy they're gonna come back to you over and over again they're gonna give you first crack at jobs that will help you to build up the number of tickets that you've done it will help you to build up ratings then you'll get more clients and you'll get a compounding effect the other thing that you need to fight tooth and nail for are ratings when you're new to the platform you need to get any job you can get your hands on. I don't care what it pays. It could pay you $5 an hour. It's more important on the front end to take any job you can get, do the job well, and make sure that you review the buyer, leave them a star rating, and then ask them to leave a star rating for you. Getting those ratings early in your career is critical to you getting more and more service calls. Not every buyer is gonna leave your rating. Even though I've completed over 1,300 jobs, I only have 871 ratings. Treat each one like a precious, precious gift. And there's nothing wrong with calling a buyer or leaving a note in the ticket and asking them to leave you a rating. Of course, you need to be reciprocal. You need to leave them a rating. Now that we've gone through the whole profile, I'll show you quickly how to add new skill sets and new equipment. You go down to the edit button by skill sets, select that, and you'll be able to enter text here. One thing I don't like about Field Nation is you have to enter everything one at a time and you have to know the word to be able to add it so you can't just go through a list and check a bunch of boxes and say oh i can do all these things you have to actually know what the words are to put into this list if you hit this there's nothing there after you type a couple of letters then it starts filtering down to show you things that are in the list. A lot of these have been custom entered by buyers. So there are these big bulky things that include all these words together instead of just saying skill set, you know, I can do security cameras. Since you can't just select a bunch of random things, I actually have put all of this together in a download for you available on my website. You will still have to copy and paste one at a time into this list. It is tedious. You need to take the time to do this so that you will have good skill set and then of course, same on the equipment. I'll provide a download for the equipment list that I have. Now these are things that I have. When you're going through that list and you're adding them, you need to add things that you have. The list on my website is including the things that I have on my profile, but you need to go through that list as you're copying and pasting them and add things that you can do. What are your skill sets? On the equipment side, I've listed all the equipment that I own. It needs to be things that you have on your work van. Adding equipment works the same way. We're gonna to go to edit. There's no list to pick from. You have to actually enter the items yourself. This again will be on my website. The more of these things you have on your profile, the more fleshed out your profile will look to a buyer and they're going to understand that you are a skilled technician. Don't put a skill set in there that you can't do and don't put a piece of equipment in there that you don't own. Fill in as many of these items as you feasibly and realistically can. If you didn't catch my other videos about Field Nation, I've done three previous to this. One is kind of a basic introduction explaining the layout. The second one is on how to request jobs and the strategies that I use to do that. The third one 
was actually talking about how you complete jobs once they're assigned to you. And there are tips and tricks in there as well that's going to make your life easier. That's the whole goal of Field Tech Academy is to teach you things like this. And I teach about more than just Field Nation. I get business from around 22 national clients. I probably ignore or turn down 75% of the work that's offered to me because I have so many options. That's what I want to teach you about how to find these clients, how to get set up with these clients, how to get out there and make a living for yourself as a freelance IT tech. On my website, fieldtechacademy.com, I've got certain downloads that are gonna be beneficial to you. I have a client list that you can purchase that is worth thousands of dollars to you. So if you got value out of this video today, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel so you're always informed about all the videos coming out. And as always, let's get you out in the field making money. I'll see you in the next video.